Hello everyone and welcome to Painting with Martin. Today we're going to continue our series of Company of Heroes the board game by me painting some miniatures from that board game. Um, we're going to be focusing our efforts today on the one of the expansion packs from uh, for the original set called All the Command of West. And of course, as you know, Company of Heroes the board game was released a couple of years ago on Kickstarter from Bad Crow Games. It's a phenomenal game and features quite many really detailed miniatures and today we're going to be focusing our efforts on this this is called the walking stuka and for good reason i'm going to sh sh tell you a little bit more about the model's history while we get into painting but of course <clears throat> as you can see it's a fairly detailed model so it's quite difficult to put some paint on but i'm going to show you in three easy steps how to make it go from good to a little bit better and it's a half track model, so it features both the tracks and the wheels. And by if you get everything right, and I hope you do, and you will do, um, because I, I, I will try to guide you the best I can, um, you will be able to paint every single armor model from the Orbit Commander West expansion pack from uh, Commander Heroes the board game. And um, with that said, I'm going to, as always, we uh, will paint this model in three easy steps. We will start by putting some base colors on it, and then we will continue with some shades. And finally, we'll put some finishing touches and also do some uh, highlights. Uh, with that said, I'm going to be telling you uh, we're going to switch the model because that's how it looks like almost when it's finished. Um, almost. And we're going to put some finishing touches on this one later on. And um, this is what it looks like with... Um, only the primer on and as you can see this is uh, what it looks like almost like a complete ready model and this is a little bit darker without any details on it so um, if you also turn it around it also says that it is called Stuka half track um, it's called walking Stuka or Stuka half track uh, different names but it's technically the same model um, and as you can see it comes with the original gray model color here and I've chosen to prime this one using a brush on primer this time called Surface Primer from Vallejo, uh, German Panzer Grey or Dunkelgrau. <clears throat> and um, you can also use any spray on primer as well. Um, I would strongly recommend Vallejo's uh, Panzer Grey uh, uh, painting spray, which is also really well. Um, I found that it didn't really cover the model that well, so I, that's why I decided to use this uh, surface primer as well. And it complemented the uh, spray-on primer really well. So with that said, we're going to first put some base colors on this one. And we're going to lighten the model a little bit so it doesn't look that uh, dark, even though it will be a little bit darkened further on when it comes to the shades. <coughs> so we are going to first... Um, for the base colors, mix in um, three colors. And the colors I've chosen to use for this one is Vallejo, all from Vallejo, um, German gray, as well as, um, let's, see, let's see if you can see this one, a neutral gray, and a small hint of, let's see if you can get, let's see this one, German field grey, World War II. That's only a small hint, and we're going to dilute it a little bit with water, because otherwise it gets a little bit thick. Here I've seen on my wet palette, I mixed German uh, grey with neutral grey and a little bit of German field grey, World War II. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the, World War, the, 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 the neutral grey and mix it in with the German dark grey. We're going to take quite a bit of it almost to, as you can see, it's lightening here already. And we're gonna use a little bit more as well. So make sure that you get a little bit gr As you can, when you get this kind of color, then you mix in a little hint of German uh, field gray, just to get a little bit of subtle tone of the, of the color. Um, and we're gonna write, wipe some brush off, uh, um, paint off the brush and I'm going to use a little bit dab of water to dilute it a little bit so it doesn't get so so th super thick and with that said we are ready to put some paint on this model and the first thing 
um, we can do is we can put this uh, using blue tack and I'm using an old um, uh, Citadel base color um, uh, paint bottle put some blue tack on it and simply attach it very very firmly to the model over here and then you will what you will simply do I'll see if I can lower the camera Hopefully you can see this one quite well. And I'm going to switch paintbrush. So I'm going to use a Cotman brush, uh, Winsor & Newton, number three for this one. And using a little bit of paint on it. And this one, um, I'm going to use cover it pretty much the entire model, except for not the tracks, not the wheels, not the machine gun, and not these rocket tubes here because um, they were made from wood these cra uh, these uh, these crates and also inside it was a either a uh, 280 or 300 millimeter rocket and but besides that I'm going to cover the entire model so stay with me and I'm going to use it with nice uh, clean easy brush strokes over here and as you can see the color is already much lighter and it's going to get even lighter as we put on the highlights but not too light so uh, even if you get some uh, some paints on the these um, um, these rocket crates don't worry about it uh, make sure you get the gun shield of the machine gun um, if you get the, the machine gun itself, it doesn't matter that much. It will be painted over as well with a wash. So now we're going on to the sides. Let's see if I can get this one up here. Hopefully you can see it. I haven't been painting for a long time, so um, this is only my third or so video on YouTube. Um, if the paint of course runs out don't worry about it we'll just mix in some more paints hopefully it won't come to that and of course we see here hopefully you can see it yeah over here you see the light as well the the um, the, um, the headlights, whatever you call it in English, um, for um, when, you, when you were driving this thing. And the, um, technically this um, this Stuka half track was technically called in German the Wurfarmen 40. It was uh, developed and uh, released to the field in 1940, therefore the name 40. And uh, it was a self-propelled self uh, rocket artillery uh, vehicle that fired 300 or 280 millimeter rockets, saturating a target. Used in, uh, it was mostly used with the armored formations known as the Panzer divisions in the German army. And it was a fairly successful weapon, but it took a long time to reload it. Getting the track in a work of the track here. And of course, the outside of the the underside of the the rocket crates, um, and um, it was based on the Nebelwerfer um, rocket system, which had been used uh, for a while. And it uh, was a mobile uh, unit. So, but because it lacked some accuracy. Uh, it uh, was usually used in larger numbers to saturate targets, especially in urban combat. And it was also fairly difficult to reload. So, um, but it, the good thing is what, that it was mobile, so it wouldn't be uh, that susceptible to counter battery fire. But in the board game, uh, speaking of that, 
that's why we're painting this model to make it look a little bit better on the on the table the board game it features high explosive damage which is deadly uh, it doesn't feature splash but it has a long range it was nerfed in the second edition uh, which came out on Kickstarter about a year ago uh, but um, even still it's a very formidable weapon and you can bring it on fairly early on in the game and it can stay on to the late game as well so um, uh, it's a really really cool board game it features um, four main factions two German factions one American one British and one Russian Hitting each other on a field, on a map, taking control of the map, collecting extra points and resources, and uh, destroying each other's vehicles for more victory points as well. Um, it's a really cool game. Uh, it released in a second edition. It's on. It was on Kickstarter about a year ago. Keep in mind, you can also paint it the inside of this vehicle here. Hopefully, I can. You can see this one is a bit hard to show on camera. Hopefully you can see it. The inside of the vehicle is also going to be painted this grey mix. But be careful not to paint, not to paint these um, wood, uh, these uh, benches inside here. They were painted with a slightly different colour, just to make it stand out a little bit. But the walls and the inner sides will be painted. like this so now, as you can already see it's starting to look a lot uh, less dark gray than the what I showed you from the primer and more like the German panzer gray that you might have seen on films uh, in the past and try to get try to get the floor here as well And as well as the inner workings of the the interiors, if you don't get all the interiors. That's fine. It's not really going to be visible on the on the field. If you do, that's great as well. And normally you can cover this one in two um, in two sets of paints or just one. Um, I'm going to be happy with one right now. But um, two is pre usually preferable. Uh, that means you get a good even coverage. So uh, for this video, I'm only going to show you one because it's the same feature. I'm covering up some of these features as well that I missed before. Uh, so you can do that as well. It happens. Because uh, it has quite a lot of details that is easy to miss um, covering it. So, something like this. That looks a lot, already a lot better. And um, we are, uh, for the next stage, also base colors, we're going to be painting these wooden crates here. These, um, these uh, rockets, they were, um, uh, even though they were spin stabilized, the rockets were not as accurate as conventional artillery. So they were loaded onto these wooden crates here. And they featured three on each side. And they were wood. So for that color, we're going to be using chocolate brown from Vallejo. And I've already uh, mixed it up over here. I can show you here on the wet palette. Here, it's over here. And I'm going to be painting it undiluted. Uh, let's see how that goes. And as you can see here, let's see here, yeah, it goes up on these crates here. Make sure that you don't paint the inner sides of this one because that's where a rocket is. This can have a different color. But the frames of the front, back, and the sides needs to be covered as well as the under um, and the thing underneath it. Hopefully you can see it. It's a little bit harder to see it here because the, I hope you can see it like this. Move it up a little bit. We can paint all three undersides while we're already at it. 
there's no point of chaining the vehicle all the way all the way up and down all the time and the same thing with the sides here And of course, also the front. Also these inner things here in between each rocket is also going to be part of the crate. Making extra care not to paint the inside of the, the vehicle. So one of my favorite vehicles to put on the field in the board game, simply because it does so much damage and it can move around on the map because in making a really feared weapon because you can destroy so much with it in one single salvo. It does two high explosive damage unupgraded, plus one additional one die of un, un, uh, one die of ex high explosive damage when it's upgraded as well for some extra munitions. And um, now we're coming around to the other side, putting some more uh, paint on my brush. And I d I'm not soaking my brush with it. I'm making sure not to put the metal part here uh, that the paint won't reach it because otherwise the bristles will go all haywire after a while so make sure you don't do that um small light easy uh, brush strokes the winsor newton cotman brush i'm using here is size three so it's a good it's a good all-round brush to use i highly recommend it it's also synthetic which is the vast majority of my paint brushes are I like it very much. And we're coming up to the final details here. And the front side of the rocket crates. A little bit more brush, a little bit more paint on the brush. Of course, as you can see how I missed this side here as well. Also the inner side here. It's very easy to miss some details here because it's a very detailed model. But if you manage to paint this one, and it's quite easy after a while, uh, you can paint every single armor model on the Orbital Commander West expansion pack uh, from Batgirl Games. Company here is the board game. The reason I chose this track as well, or well, this model, is that it features both tracks and wheels. And in the Orbital Commander West expansion pack, which I highly, highly recommend you to get, because otherwise you're playing with four uh, factions. These means you can fly, play with the fifth and the fifth German faction, the second German faction, uh, is that it features Puma, uh, uh, Scout cars, it features Kettenkrauts, um, small uh, tracked uh, motorcycles, it features the mighty Panther tanks, the Lux uh, light tanks, the supply vehicles, and of course this walking Stukas as well as a number of um, other things such as anti-tank guns and um, flak guns that you can put out as emplacements. And I'm going to cover the emplacement from the British side as well, which uses use an actual emplacement with, with the um, sandbags around it in another video. Now this one is looking quite all right, but before we move on to the shades, we have one more thing to do, and that is to paint the tracks and the wheels. And for that, we're simply going to switch it around, put it on the side, on, on, on the top here, and making sure that you, that's why I painted the, the, um, the, the base color of the gray first, so that it will actually have time to dry. And you will simply do it, do it here, like putting it like this. And you can see here, it says Stuka half track. It sees that you can already see that it's the color here compared to the color we put on is a little bit lighter. That's where we, where we want to get it, but uh, before that ha is happening, we have to, we have a few more stages to go through. Now, for the tracks and the wheels, I'm going to be using um, a color called um, there it is. 
um, uh, Vallejo's Glossy Black. You can use, usually uh, use regular black as well. You can also use brown. But I'm going to save that a little bit for the highlights to come. And I'm going to be using a little bit of undiluted Glossy Black on my brush. And painting the tracks and the road wheels. And starting the road wheels. And pick in mind that it's just the undersides of the road wheels. Like this, making sure extra careful not to touch what we just painted. And as well the insides. And as well as the ring around where the rubber is. Like this, and the other one. And now for the tracks. Now it looks like this. Hopefully, you can see this. Let's see if I can increase the light here. It looks like this. Now you can see the, the crates as well. And as well, we're going to be painting the tracks. I'm not looking to dilute the tracks or to cover the tracks entirely. If some of the original color shows through, it's okay because we're going to cover it with the, with the shades. And of course, you can see here, let's see if I can turn around, um, the upper side of the tracks will also need to be painted. Looks like this. You can also reach underneath here. And for the other track, quick and easy way to put some details on this fine looking miniature. A little bit more details left to go. We're almost ready to go in for the second stage, which is the shades. So if you followed me so far, well done. There you go. Tracks and wheels done. And now we are ready for the next stage, which is the shading. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to leave this here to dry on the other side. I'm going to clean my brush in a pot of water I have next to, it, to me over here. Let's see if I can show it to you. It's one of these regular water pots from Citadel. You can just use any kitchen cup or whatever you want to use. This one I found that it's really useful because it has these, it's not flat in the bottom, so you can brush off the paints um, fairly easily. Now, this is what it looks like when it's dry, the other model, hopefully. And now, um, oh, uh, we are going to put some shades on this model. And the shades I'm trying, I'm going to use, is um, the from Vallejo uh, black wash over the entire model, except for the crates. Where uh, what I'm going to be using here is called Aquax Earth Shade from um, Citadel. So I'm going to be starting actually with the Aquax Earth Shade because that's the, the and I'm going to be using it undiluted. I'm going to put it straight from the brush, uh, straight from the bottle. Um, as you can see, there's always some little, little bit left here. And then I'm going to be using it to cover the, um, the wooden crates like this, undiluted, like this. As you can already see, 
I hope you can see this. Um, it's already put a little bit of more definition on the model, bringing out those details we covered before with the, with the brush. Putting some more And then we're going to the top ones. Same thing here, we don't let it pool in the recesses here. Try not to. Covering the back, front, and anything under it as well. It's gonna be a lot easier to, sh to put some details on on the miniature once the shade is dry because that means we can highlight up some of the details almost a little bit more left of the agrix earth shade Make sure that you close the bottle as well uh, once you put it on because I've had plenty of times where I've actually spilled the bottles all over my, my table. It's very, very annoying, it's costly, and it takes some time to clean up. So don't make my mistakes. Yours. All right, there we have it. The shade is done for the wooden crates. And then we are going to use the black wash. And we actually, before we actually use uh, the black wash on the rest of the miniature, I'm gonna switch it around and use it on the tracks. Like this. And the black wash is over here. I'm not going to use it on my wet palette, I'm going to slide it aside, I'm going to use it on a small palette, it's a regular palette you can get in any hobby store. Squeeze it out here, undiluted, on the tracks and the road wheels. Like this. And I'm also using it for the inside of these cogs and wheels as well. Letting it pool in the recesses here. Like really, really soak it in. Making sure that it actually defines some of the definitions before. As well as this one. And this one. Oh, need to attach it a little bit more. And the top side, of course. Not letting it pull too much. If you feel that it's done so, just take some the brush, stick it inside there, and let the brush soak up the the shades. Now, already quite okay. I'm going to switch it around, put it on top here, and I'm going to continue using it on the rest of the miniature. Or the, the rest of the grey areas. Oops, it fell around. Can happen. There you go. And all the grey areas, the gun shield, the things that we covered with the grey before. The machine gun. inside of thing here forgot to tell you as well um, the inside here I just painted with uh, German field gray if I, I forgot to do that now it's, um, it's not a big thing uh, you can just keep it as it is and you, you can either 
and we just paint it as as it was from the the, the base color uh, I'm shading it here now anyways mistakes happens so please put any comments or questions uh, in the comments uh, comment section uh, things that I, I should have been doing or I missed I really appreciate it now we're counting the underneath the rockets as well as over here sides of the vehicle now you're probably wondering why I haven't covered the front yet and I'm going to show you a really nice technique that I learned by, from another really good painter called Sarastro um, big inspiration for mine um, cover the entire front like this with a lot of wash or shade as we call it then put the brush aside take a, um, a cloth uh, a fabric cloth and in this case wipe some of the uh, wash off in um in one direction this will simulate uh, some weathering effects like it's been raining um, and it will also help the drying um, process quite well I don't want it to to, uh, to uh, take it off all the recesses just the flat areas so oh, there you go I missed an area here and it's good that I, I missed that because that means I can show you the back side here as well don't wipe off everything just enough so you can see that it's been like it gives it a little, little bit more definition I think and the flat side here as well and maybe the inside this is a flat area like this now that's the shades um, and we're almost done with two two thirds of the uh, the painting of this model and um, before we go into the last stage we're going to leave this one to dry thoroughly and um, then we're going to go into the highlights highlights is what I consider to be one of the most fun parts um, if you want to um, you can just do as much as you want from these highlights uh, you don't have to do much at all uh, you can just uh, cleaning off the some of the paint from the brush here so it's ready to paint you can paint as much as you want um, but I feel the highlights really bring out the um, the uh, the model on the table really um, putting it on the blue tag on this old paint bottle it's a really good way it's a handy way of actually using it uh, and eventually the, the paints dry out and stuff like that as well so um, I'm not uh, sponsored in any way from any company so if you see these citadels bottles and uh, games and stuff like that I, I bought them on my own I paint on my spare time and I just decided to share some of the uh, tips and tricks that I've learned through the years and so you can paint your models as well it's not going to win you any competitions or any prizes but it will hopefully make your models look a little bit better on the table and maybe you'll have fun in the process as well and as I, if, as I said before, I'm really grateful if you um, put um, a like button um, and of course, if you want to subscribe to my channels, that would, the channel would, would be really nice as well. So with that said, um, this is what the model should look like, kind of, when it's quite done. I'm going to raise my camera a little bit. Hopefully it will be a little bit better. I'm going to see if I can get a better lighting so it looks like this now it looks quite grimy right now so first of all um, what many uh, model painters do they put on the base colors again now you can do that perfectly fine but what I would probably want to do right now is I would want to start what we call dry brushing dry brushing means you take a an old brush 
uh, that you're not very careful of. Or you can even take a makeup brush. Uh, I've used, this is a fl uh, very flat brush I used before. It's um, um, it's AMI, AMI series A185. I've never used this before, so it's the first model I'm using it for. And um, that means I soak up the, um, the brush with a lot of paint. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to soak up the original mix that we had here with quite a lot of the paint. And then I'm going to wipe it off on the piece of kitchen towel like this. And then when almost all the paint has been wiped off, then I'm going to actually drop, stroke it over the miniature. And I'm going to use it in a fairly circle, circular pattern like this, because it's a flat area. Or you can just do it a little bit over the, over the edges. Okay. I'm only using it to cover the edges of the gray areas. And eventually it will hit some of the black areas as well, and that's not a problem. Uh, we will cover it as well later on. It will... And of course, you will probably notice that um, I couldn't cover all the small details. That's why I'm using a smaller brush for the same dry brushing technique to get into these details, including the tracks here, the side of the tracks. and underneath the rockets and the, as well as the inside. It's very brutal on the brush here, so make sure that you use an old brush because it will destroy them very easily. If you can't get all the details inside on the interiors, don't worry about it. Um, we can cover those details later on as well if you want to. You can just leave it. So now that first part of the dry brush is done and complete. We're going to move on to the second stage of the dry brush. The second stage of the dry brush, I'm going to use pure neutral grey. I'm going to give the bottle a little bit of a shake like this to make sure all the pigments doesn't end up in the end of the bottle. I'm going to squeeze it out on my wet palette over here. And when you're dry brushing, you don't dilute the paint, not with water, not with any mediums. Uh, use it as it is. And you, again, putting it on my, you can show that there's quite a lot of paint here. But the po point here is to wipe it off. And there are two ways of dry brushing. There is the light dry brush, which is uses very little paint on the brush as well as a heavy dry brush, which is, uses a little bit more. And I'm using a light dry brush now. And I'm going to be see how the paint is turning up. Now I'm focusing on the raised areas here. As you can see, it was a little bit too much paint, so I'm going to wipe it off again. And here on the raised areas here as well, making sure they stand out. You can use this dry brush either before the shade or after. When I painted the British armor, I think I did it before. Now I'm just showing you how to use it after. As you can see here, the hinges are on this door here, 
with a when you got out out of the half track are seen a little bit more. Let's see if I can show it to you. Shown a little bit more um, with some more detail. Use it on the sides as well and underneath. And then when that dry brush is done, and you don't really have to wait that much to uh, finish, I'm going to use a tiny, tiny bit of white grey from Vallejo in this mix of neutral grey. And when you're using whites, you have to be very careful not to use it too much because it's a very, very, uh, it's a very, it's a very delicate colour. So that's why when I'm mixing it in mixing it in with a different brush. Um, I'm going to use a little bit more neutral grey, I see. So maybe something like one-tenth white into the grey. Because the white lighten its, light, lightens it so much, maybe a little bit more. Well, that's done. I'm using an older brush, a smaller older brush than the round one. Same dry brush technique. Wipe off some of the most of the paint on the on the model, and slowly go over only parts of the details, such as the hinges here, the headlights, the gun. Gun shield, parts of these to make them stand out a little bit more, as well as the hinges over here. So where the sun were, were was to catch some of the, also a little bit on the tracks here, where the sun would shine, so to say. Also use it sparingly a little bit on the on the flat surface areas here. A little bit more. And as you can see now, if you compare it to the original painting here, this is the original or what I started with with when I put some brush, when I put some details on it. Let's see if I can lower the camera. This is what it looked like from when we started off with the base colors. And this is what it looks like when you actually have put some some dry brush on it. Okay. So I'm still not happy with it. Not still not done with it. So as you can see here, we have the uh, the road wheels inside here. And we also we covered some of the road wheels. We're still going to have to um, uh, repair some of the damage we did here. We also, also have the machine gun, and we still haven't done with the crates yet, and some of the interior. But the base colors on the top of the tank looks fairly okay right now. So, uh, with that said, I'm going to be using uh, German dark gray on the road wheels. And this is entirely optional, the step. But you can, at the same time, also paint the machine gun with this. I'm using it undiluted. Of course, it's important to paint the uh, to clean the, your brushes before, making sure everything is all right. Now I'm going to use a size 3 Cotman brush for the red wheels. And it's a little bit fiddly work here. I'm 
but you can get it done. We'll make sure that they actually stand out a little bit more. And this is one of these tiny details that is, of course, entirely optional. Now, you can also paint the machine gun here. Machine gun was an MG34. It came in two models, two variants, MG42, which was later, and MG34, which was usually mounted on armor vehicles in the German army in World War II. The back side here can either be painted brown, or, as I'm doing now, uh, dark colored, which was also a form of early plastic called Bakelite. So it can be painted brown as well. I'm just painting it uh, dark enough as I already have it here. All right. Uh, we can also paint the, the small axe here. So I can paint the axe metal here. And uh, with that color. And then it looks fairly okay. Um, I'm also going to use some repair work with uh, painting some bl glossed black on the road wheels over here. Because I accidentally touched it when it comes to, and also I forgot to paint it underneath here. So you can also always go and repair these mistakes that you make on the way. Here you go. Also, the tracks over here. Whoa. So, with that done, uh, it's almost dried, we can go in actually to paint the German dark grey, no sorry, German uh, field grey, of the inside of the benches here. These can also be painted um, chocolate brown or wooden all right uh, with that done uh, we're also going to focus our attention now on the um, uh, the crates For that, I'm going to be using uh, Flat Earth from Vallejo. And I'm using it undiluted to paint some on top, some extra detail on where we had the crates here. And it's quite fiddly work, 
but you can see it really makes this model pop a little bit more. And we're almost coming to the end of the model. Now it's coming up on an hour. So I'm going to try to keep it within the hour. As you can see here, I'm keeping, hard to see underneath, but I'm keeping some of the original brown, chocolate brown color here. Covering it just slightly with the flat earth. Now for the second one. And if you cover some of the brown on the Panzer Grey, don't worry, you can easily cover that up by using some original Panzer Grey and highlighting it up with the dry brush techniques that I showed you. But this, now it's starting to look a little bit more like a model, ready for the battlefield. With that said, you can also paint some of the, there's supposed to be some kind of fuel tank over here. You can paint that chocolate brown as well and keep it chocolate brown as well as the axe handle here. You can either keep it chocolate brown or a mix of chocolate brown and uh, flat earth. Now, with that done, you can finish starting up with some finishing touches on the brown uh, crates, and it's looking quite all right now. Now, for the fa for the other stage, now we're going to paint some uh, some metal parts. You're painting the machine gun, the axe, uh, not the axe handle, but the axe blade, as well as the tracks here to put some metal shine on them. And for that color, we are going to be using. Uh, natural steel from Vallejo. Clean the brush before you put some more different kind of uh, paint on it. And the natural steel, use it undiluted and put it on over here on your wet palette or your small palette as well. handle as you can see over here just like that and you can either dry brush it on the machine gun or put in just some small tiny details here like this right now with that done you we're going to switch the model 
and turn it upside down to uh, dry brush this natural steel on top of the, um, the tracks. Same technique as before using the dry brush that I showed you. Just covering the raised areas with this, as well as some of the insides with a small light dry brush, as well as the inside of the road vehicle, the uh, road, road wheel, sorry. Just like this. Sorry, it came out of camera. like this. So it shines a little bit. Um, you can see the, the axe shines a little bit there as well. And with that done, uh, we're coming in to almost the final part of the model. Uh, and that is to actually paint the rockets inside here. The rockets here is going to be a little bit tricky. And I'm going to be using a whole different kind of color that we haven't used before on this channel called um, Vallejo's Reflective Green. I'm going to use it undiluted. Bring it, putting it out over here. And this is very, very fiddly work. So if you get things wrong here, um, don't worry, you can always brush it up. But I would strongly recommend using a very fine tipped brush. I'm going to see if I can use it with my size 3 brush, but I may actually have to switch for a size 2. Or in this case, even a size double zero. I'm going to use only the tip of the thing here and paint the insides of the rocket putting up over here so my hands don't shake it can be a little bit an issue this is going to be a little bit of fiddly work and it's very subtle only the inside of this rocket and as well the outside here so you can see here if you made any mistakes painting over the rockets uh, with the brown, here's your chance to actually to fix it. These rockets are devastating. 280 or 300 millimeter you launched in Barrage uh, Bar uh, on, in Salvos um, and when they launched the, these rockets they didn't stay in the vehicle well, they used uh, some kind of remote standing outside and then these wooden crates that you see here were discarded on huge heaps they were used in the Warsaw Uprising 1944 particularly in urban combat. Because it's called the Wurfram and 40, it was first introduced to the German army in 1940. And the company here is the board game. This is from the expansion called Orbe Commando Vest, um, which is, introduces a whole new faction um, to the Germans and a lot of replayability. Making sure that I touch only the tip of the rocket here. With this reflective green from Vallejo. Now going on to the top of the rockets, which can be seen a little bit more. Be extra careful here what you paint. It's a fine tipped brush, small one. 
This is the type double zero from Winsor Newton Cosman series. My favorite line of brushes. Let's see if I can get it right for you. And as, as you can see, I'm holding the uh, my hands very uh, close to the end of the brush for more uh, to, to be having to have more stable uh, to be more stable. You can do if you want to. You can use two or maybe even three layers for this. feel you didn't get enough coverage on the rockets here. I'm using two layers here. Because I feel this is a part of a model that really, really stands out. layer up here on top. For those of you who really, really want to pop even more, you can use a green shade and do this process over again, but I feel it that's a little bit unnecessary. Um, and there you have it, most of it. Now, the next stage here, the, the model is completely complete. It's, you can use it on the battlefield, you can put some varnish on it. And varnish is something looking like this from Vallejo. Matte varnish, you put it uh, a little bit with 50-50 water after the paint is entirely dry. and. It will leave a thin white coat uh, that will disappear after a while, but it will allow your models to be touched uh, almost indefinitely um, and the paint won't go away. I, will, I highly recommend it. Um, if you feel like you want to add a, f a few more tiny details, now stay with me, uh, because again, entirely optional, not really necessary at all. Um, but I want to make sure some of the details on this model really, really stand out. So I'm going to be using uh, the wash again. And this is what we call a selective wash. I used it a little bit on, and I'm using the same double zero brush here. And I'm going to be painting it under, in these small little cracks here. Making sure these cracks really stand out. The gun, the, the viewports as well as the door hinges here, the door sides. It will make them stand out more. I really like this subtle effect. And also around the gun shield. Gives it a little bit more definition. You can also cover the parts of the gun there if you feel it's too much, uh, too light, like I do here with the, the axe. And also the inside of the, the this door here. Make sure that it really stands out.
Now, um, for the final touch, I'm going to be using something called typhoid corrosion from Vallejo's, um, uh, not from Citadel. <coughs> and I'm going to get, give it a good shake. It's very grimy, this color. It's from the technical part of the uh, Vallejo's, uh, from Citadel, sorry. I'm going to use it sparingly, undiluted from the, the, um, from the, from the jar. And to give it a little bit of a jar, a rust and jar effect where rust and grime have accumulated on the model. And you can also use it sparingly in this chipping effect here. Looking like this, small tops, small dots here. But if you want it to look like factory new, then just keep it as it is and you're ready to go. I feel that inside these road wheels, it's nice to use it, simulating some rust, making sure that it doesn't look so shiny. And um, If you feel that it got too much, then it's very easy. Take this table, uh, this fabric cloth and just wipe it off. It'll simulate some grime effects as well, very easily. That's what I'm doing here. You can even do it like this, some dots here. And use it a little bit with your hand. Like this. And some grime effects on the hinges here would be useful as well. Also getting it off with your fingers and your thumbs. Also inside here on the benches wiping it off with a kitchen towel or one of these ear cleaners also nice so it doesn't look so that it doesn't look factory new I like my models that are a little bit of grime on them a little bit of weathering and this is weathering effects I'm going to be using another video for this as well and there you have it um, you want to have a tiny detail that is also entirely optional. You can use uh, Citadel's uh, Texture Badland, which is a mud effect. Mud effects are nice. Um, they're very, very, uh, it's very thick. What you can do here is you can paint some mud effects on the road wheels by simply wiping some of the mud off with a tablecloth. You can turn it around. Oh, some of the stuff here got stuck. And on the road wheels as well, on the tracks here as well. Light dry brush. And then you can also get that on top of the protection, the, these metal, these parts as well. And that is done. Uh, thank you everyone for watching, staying with me for one hour and nine minutes, uh, watching the me paint the uh, Stuka half track from the Orbit Commando West expansion from Company Here's the board game. If you like what you see, please hit the like button and the subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Please go and put some paint on those miniatures, and thank you very much for watching.